Hi, everyone. Welcome to the How We Hustle podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Tanya. And we invite you to join us in our unfiltered conversation about the real life hustle of being an entrepreneur. For more information about the podcast, check out HowWeHustlePodcast.com. Make sure to check us out on Instagram at How We Hustle Podcast. You'll find information on new episodes as well as notable quotes from the episodes we do. So come check us out at How We Hustle Podcast on Instagram. The thing I don't think most people realize about Mike's business book, Peacock, is that Mike actually writes the book for you. So most people are thinking that they're going to get some sort of coach of some sort that's going to help them write their book or help them be a better writer. But what book Peacock really does is they write the book for you. They design it, they strategize it, they publish it. So Mike and I were just talking about the fears that come up for people or the reasons why people don't move forward with getting their book out there to the world. And we were just discussing how a while ago, maybe two years ago, I was in Italy and one of the people I was in Italy with told me that I used to be afraid of public speaking. I used to be afraid to share my opinions, share my voice, stand up in front of a group of people and even speak. And she said to me, because I had such great conversations with her one-on-one, she said to me, Tanya, by not standing up, by not speaking or by not sharing your opinion, you're masturbating your gifts. And so Mike and I were just having this conversation with each other where that's what I feel like a lot of people are doing with their book ideas is they're masturbating their message. They're masturbating their story because they're only pleasuring themselves with that experience. They're only pleasuring themselves with this great idea that they have, this new perspective that they have. When in fact, that message, that story, that idea could help people. So they're masturbating their story. And I think it's really important that we get that message out to people, like stop masturbating your purpose, your gifts, your message, your idea. Yeah, it's especially good when we use that uh, analogy too. It certainly gets it out there. Um, but yeah, so we were talking about my business and like a big, a big, uh, you know, thing that I want to touch on in my own messaging is like, why, you know, if you're scared to tell your story, but like, what is the impact of not telling your story? If you just, if you just keep your story to yourself, then yeah, you're just, uh, you're masturbating with it. You are staying silent on it and you're just pleasuring yourself with it. And as much fun as that can be, like, there's so much more value to be had by sharing your gifts with other people. And like, this is something that can feel uncomfortable. I know when I wrote my first book, the first book that I wrote and the first book that I published was on like a money mindset book. And I was thinking to myself, I was scared of telling my story because here I am wanting to publish a book that so many more successful people in the world have also published on the same thing. So it's like, who do I think I am to put a book out there on money mindset when all I have is a small little online company and here I am competing with, um, you know, big people. It's actually funny, like when I published my first book, which was called um, Think Rich to Get Rich, then uh, I looked it up on Amazon and my book listing was uh, underneath Robert Kiyosaki and, and just over Donald Trump. So I'm looking at it thinking this is hilarious. Like here's my book sandwiched in between these two people who have accomplished a lot more, but like, who cares, right? Um, by putting it out there and by just, you know, I was, I, I got feedback from people who read it and they're like, you know, I, I really resonated with some of the things you said and not everybody wants to hear messaging from the top people. They want to hear messaging. We've talked about this before, but they want to hear uh, from someone who's maybe one step ahead of them or two steps ahead of them, not a hundred steps ahead of them, because th- that sort of makes it more real. And so how did they get there? Like, how did they ever get there? They got there by sharing their opinions, their thoughts, their ideas, and then it took off. 
But if they never shared them at the beginning, it would never have taken off. They would never have been seen as a thought leader if they had never shared them to begin with. Yeah. So something I say, something yeah. I say is like, I say to my the people I talk to, like they say, I don't know if, if what I want to share is worthy. And I say, look, like the reason you want to share it is because it's a story you have. It's something that you have experienced and I promise you that there are people out there that are currently experiencing what you have experienced. So those people that are currently experience it, experiencing it, regardless of how, you know, how few, how, how few people you think there are that are experiencing it, there are people that will benefit from it. And that leads into the line that, you know, you keep saying over and over and over, which is a great line, which is, if this is what, you know, can help one person, then is it worthwhile to be judged by whatever, 10 people or yeah. if, if you, are you willing to be judged by 10 people? If it helps one person who is struggling, because I think that that is the key in all of us. Like I was just saying to you before is that some people are like, okay, well, am I going to make a million dollars? Am I going to be a New York times bestseller? If I publish this book, that's not really what it's about. Like, even if you publish the book, if 50 people buy the book and 25 people, it changes their life. Was that worth it? Are you willing to publish the book? If it changes 25 people's lives, or maybe it will change 2.5 million people's lives. But like, every single person matters. Like if you help, and I was just saying this to Mike that, you know, we're all doing our part one person at a time, right? So a doctor might study for years to become a surgeon who saves somebody's life, who then maybe changes the world. The doctor had a really powerful and important part to play in that person who changed the world. Like if he hadn't saved that person, if he hadn't done the thing that he was really great at and believed that he was an important part, he would never have saved that person who then went on to do that great thing. Right. So I guess like if you are staying silent in whatever it is that like whatever gift you have that you're, you're keeping to yourself, maybe shift your mindset and think like, what? is the world missing out on because I'm keeping silence? Like not, not what am I protecting myself from by keeping silent, but what is, what are others missing out on? Like what opportunity for service is not being served by me masturbating with these ideas and keeping them to myself, you know, sort of, sort of like switching the way you perceive the thoughts that are going through your head. I love that. Yeah, because there's really just two ways, uh, maybe there's more, but like there's two different ways that you can think about something. You can think about like, I don't want to do this because something bad might happen to me, or I should do this because if I do, lots of good things will happen to me and to others. So it's like, which of these ways of thinking are you going to let uh, dictate your actions? Well, what you focus on grows. So if you focus on all the bad things, all the what ifs, that's exactly what's going to come to fruition because that's where you're focusing your time and energy. If you focus on how can I make this powerful? How can I be of service? How is this going to help people? Then you'll put time and energy into making sure that it's of service and valuable and powerful for others. And so you need to focus on the good parts. It's so easy. It's the easy route to focus on all the reasons not to do something it takes a leader to focus on all the reasons to do it. Even when everyone else is telling you not to do it, it's such a bad idea. There's going to be so many naysayers on this journey that like if everybody just stopped because someone didn't think it was a great idea, we wouldn't have basically any of the things that we have nowadays. Like if so, I always used to tell the story about like, I'm sure the person who said, Hey, I want to land on the moon. I want to go and walk on the moon. People probably thought that person was crazy. And now people are like, oh, I want to live on Mars. So people have to have ideas. And it's so easy to be one of those people that's like, oh, that's such a bad idea. How can you make that a good idea? How can you make it happen? Focus there. Focus on making the world a better place. Focus on making great ideas possible rather than poking holes in people's ideas. 
and this is something you're helping me to when I, when I talk to my clients, um, you're always saying to me, like, leave it in the realm of possibility. It's like, because I have clients and they'll say stuff to me like, oh, I don't know. They'll, they'll let their fear over whether it's, uh, you know, fear of telling their story or fear of investing in themselves or whatever. It's all about flipping that switch and being like, yes, you can let the fear you know, guide you, but like, what is possible if you just push fear aside? Like, what could you accomplish? And that is something that you can really use to, to, to further any business, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's in my nature because I'm a Pisces and we're very like, um, imaginative. So I always like imagine all of the things that could come from saying yes to something and all of the things that could come from saying no. So if you say, no, I'm not going to share my story. Okay. So then what's going to happen in your life? So you're going to stay doing the exact same thing you're doing. So it's like a year is going to go by five years going to go by. Like, what are you going to be doing in a year from now? That it's going to make you happier. What, how are you going to feel if you do nothing? Are you still going to be thinking about this thought? Are you still going to be researching it? Are you still going to be spending time on it? And what if you had said yes? What if you had said yes? Yes. And in a year from now, you were on stage as a motivational speaker. What if in a year from now you quit your job? What if you were a New York Times bestseller in a year from now? Because that is the reality of what happens for people. Like if I look back on a year ago in my life, like I was still working my nine to five job. I hadn't even started my group program, which has been amazing and incredible. I didn't have any of the clients I work with now. And so my whole life would be completely different my whole life. And like, that's what can change in a year from saying yes. That's what changed for me saying yes to working with my coach. Like that's what came from me saying yes to my business and investing in different things and creating different things and believing that I could do it, believing that I could run a group program, believing that I could charge more for what I did, believing that I could quit my job. Like it's that saying yes to what you want rather than shrinking by, because everyone says, no, Tanya, you're crazy. You have a great job. You have a secure job. You have benefits. Like if I had been like, okay, yeah, like I should just like accept that, like, this is what my life's going to be like. I could have done that, but would I still be wanting the life that I have now? And what would have changed? So think about like what could come from saying yes. It's really easy to let like the voices that come externally sort of, you know, convince you that you should stay silent and whatever it is. Cause it's especially like we're all doing unique things, like what I'm doing and what you're doing. A lot of people don't understand it. Like, <laughs> you know, my, my parents still don't really get what I'm doing. They get it, but they don't. And I, you could probably say the same thing. So, you know, don't, I, not that I don't listen to them, but I'm really selective in, in what messages I hear that allow me, you know, to that affect whether or not I'm going to stay silent. And that's a good topic to bring up. And I know my parents do listen to my podcast, but um, I mean, this is something they know too, is like at the beginning, they, they were supportive of me in the sense of like, you know, Tanya, anything you set your mind to, you'll, you do, right? Like you, as long as you're passionate and you believe in it, like you'll, you'll make it happen. So they believed in me, but I don't think they believed in what I was doing. And like, they were just like, you know, being like those parents, like, okay, well, we'll watch, like, let her do her thing. And then like, see how that pans out. But I don't think they really believed in what I was doing. And now a year later, like I can tell you my dad, who is like typically would not ever say something like this, like has even said to me like, Hey, could you help me do something like that? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Like it takes a bit of time for other people to, um, come around. I always think of it like, um, the tipping point, right. Is there are early adopters, there are late adopters and, some people are just later adopters. They don't believe in it until someone's tested it out and they've seen it with their own eyes. And like, it's happened over a long period of time. And then there are people that like, that are more like early adopters who are like, okay, like I'm down with this. Like, let's try this. Like, yeah, I'm into this. Like, let me see how this goes. And they're more into the possibility and willing to take risks. So some people are just late adopters. They just need a bit more time to come around. And like they will, they just need some more time. 
But if you're going to get yourself to that point, it really requires a leap of some sort on your point. And that's, that's an initial uh, response to the fear that you're, that you're holding on to, uh, standing in the way of whatever it is you want to do, whether it's like publishing your story or, or taking your, your business to the next level by hiring a coach or deciding that you want to go to Mars, you know, like whatever it is, whatever uh, lofty idea you have, it does require a leap and you have to really confront that fear head on as opposed to just masturbating it in your head. <laughs> yeah. And be willing to stand up for your idea. And if it's your family that doesn't, or even your friends or your partner that doesn't necessarily like believe in it with you or like feeds your fears, then reaching out and finding some other sort of support group, because we definitely can't all do it on our own. It's lonely enough. And I mean, there are Facebook groups, there are masterminds, there are group programs, there are coaches that you can seek out. I know Mike just started his Facebook group and we'll leave the link in the um, show notes for you guys to join it. But like creating or joining a supportive group that gets you that understands the journey you're on and that will help you stick with it when your family and your friends and even maybe your partner are not as supportive or don't know how to be supportive because they've never felt these types of fears or struggles that you'll go through on this journey. Yeah, that's a great point. Like if you want to do something like support is necessary and it's such a great way to get you to the next level, but don't look for that support with the same people that are stoking that fear within you. Like there's so many people out there. Like I help people with books and you help people with businesses. Like look to the people who are out there like offering support because they are the people that are going to move you past your fear. So like you need support, but get it from the right people because that's like the best way to accomplish your dreams, really, whatever those dreams are. Yeah. And they are out there. So definitely seek out support, ask for help. It's a sign of strength, not weakness. And um, if you're not getting it at home, find it elsewhere because there will be people out there that will help you and support you and you can do it. All right. So the overarching message here is don't masturbate your gifts. Don't masturbate your message. Don't masturbate your ideas. They need to be heard and felt and pleasured and enjoyed. And that's a wrap on another episode of How We Hustle. For more information, check out howwehustlepodcast.com.